everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play! Today we're going to be checking out something new. Um, it's going to be a game called God Tier from Steamforge Games. Now this is a bit unique in Let's Plays because this game is actually an open beta. Um, this is going to be one of those times you get to see something new uh, and actually be able to influence how it looks in the end. Uh, Steamforge is doing an open playtest uh, and allowing uh, customers to buy what's called a playtest kit. Um, they're selling basically uh, a, a, a metal pre-release version of what's probably going to be a board game. They haven't said um, it's going to be a box game, but I'm imagining this is probably going to be in their new vein, much like Dark Souls and the Guild Ball kickoff box of all-in-one, ready-to-play out of the box, uh, cardboard token, and um, plastic pre-assembled models games. Now I'm speaking out my <laughs> my assumptions there, not 100% sure what it's going to be, uh, but for the playtest kit what you receive is you receive a playmat, um, all the tokens you need to play the game, as well as some colored dice with custom stickers to put on them to make them ready to go. If you guys ever want to have an insight into how game developers uh, actually playtest their games, all the gubbins that come in this box basically are the things that you'll see in game, like game design and board game design places. They just have a back room full of this stuff. <laughs> so blank dice, so they can make their own custom dice. They print them off on label makers, um, and they, they try out their own games. The game's on a poster mat, which you'll uh, get to see as you play the game on. And the models are all in metal, because they're uh, 3D prints that have been then spun up and cast in metal. So if you are interested in this game, um, and not having plastic pre-assembled miniatures in the future, and you want some uh, you know, like really good fidelity in your casting, this is worth checking out now, because the models are gorgeous, some of them are huge display pieces, uh, and yeah, and it's really neat. So. We're going to be trying out the version 3 of the game. This is just to give you guys an example of what this is going to be like. Uh, the game itself is a MOBA style, um, I guess, scenario driven game. The plan is that there are legacy rules in the future. So much like in like Dota, you can level your characters up if you play two or three games in a day. Um, earn achievements and stuff like that. For this beta playtest though, right now they're focusing on the core rules of the game um, and a sort of like a, a generalist mission. This is like the first mission. Uh, the background and setting is that the world is basically destroyed by a war between the gods. The gods had a giant civil war, wiped each other out, and we're all shattered into a million pieces that are called god tiers. Now those have trickled down to earth, and when you find one, um, the champions basically are people with powers great enough they can actually harness it and slowly ascend to godhood. So all the champions Champions are fighting to try and become the new gods. Uh, that's why when you see the miniatures, the champions, a lot of them, have either harnessed the energy, become more powerful like wizards or something like that, and they have these huge followers they're animating, or they've just grown to titanic proportions. When you see Rodri the dwarf, he's the least dwarfy dwarf ever, because he's enormous. He's this huge dude that's slowly swung with powers, he assumes it, and like collects these godstones. It's a really neat premise, um, because all the old alliances are dead, because the gods are dead, any champion can ally with any champion, so it's a lot, a lot like when you're seeing the first screen in Street Fighter, and there's all these faces, you can go and pick the ones you like to make your team, and of course both sides can have the same ones too. They recommend a two versus two champion for your first game, um, and that's what we're going to be playing today. So I'll walk you through the basic core mechanics of the rules, we'll show you the champions that we're playing with. We're playing with the .3 version of the playtest right now, and this is an open playtest, so the cards are all downloadable, you can go check them out in the video description below, um, and, uh, and it will be updated. So at the time of this airing, it might not be version 3 anymore, but the tweaks so far have been fairly minor in the last couple, so I wouldn't worry too much about the actual like nuts and bolts of the model's rules, because it's still an open playtest. More look at the core mechanics of the game and how it plays. So anyway, let's introduce you now to God Tier. And so here it is, the playtest version of God Tier. So um, what do you get in the box? Well, in the basic playtest kit, um, you're going to get uh, a set of five plus eight is uh, 13. Uh, and then six more 19 miniatures. Uh, so you get Rodri here, the dwarf champion and his house guard. Um, he's the world's biggest dwarf. You're going to get Wraith Marid, which is a big dragon man and his whirlpools of elementals. You're going to get Lorsane, the elven archer, and her uh, three elf rangers. And then I've only painted up the first four, so you're going to see you get Blackjaw the exile and his orc berserkers. Now you can get expansions for the playtest kit too, which will include Rangosh, who I also painted as Shattered Bows. And these guys are um, a giant Minotaur Man as the champion, and then these five little uh, sort of brigands, I guess they'd be, the humans. And Shale and his golem, who I couldn't resist painting up first. Um, and these are expansions for the playtest kit, if you want to go from four to six champions. So the idea is the basic playtest kit, 
Um, it's available for sale right now on the Steam Forge site. Gets you enough to play a 2v2 game. And if you want to buy the add-ons, you can go all the way up to 3x3. Um, ideally, you and a friend each want to get a playtest kit because then you can have mirrored champions back and forth and play like a, a game where you get to pick from all six. Um, but yeah, those are the miniatures that come in the box and the miniatures of the expansion. So expansion set, expansion set, and then these six, 11, uh, 19 miniatures come in the box set. And they also get all your dice, and there's a lot more dice than I'm showing, I'm just showing the examples. You have blue dodge dice, you get your skill dice, which are, of course, graded by color, so yellow being the weakest, red being the strongest. There's no misses on any of them, it's just one through whatever the max amount is. You get your boons and banes, um, so the black and white dice uh, are penalties to stats, so for ba uh, banes, and then um, uh, the boons are, sorry, blights rather, not banes. And then the boons are the um, bonuses to your stats. And they're basically just there as status effect markers. Sometimes you roll them. Mostly you would just put down whatever the effect is on the card of the unit that it's affecting. You get your flag tokens slash KO tokens, which are little face ones here, and they're all just an MDF. Now, I just primed them black first before I stuck these on. You get a sticker sheet with all of the, the basically the markings need to go on there. So you don't have to do that yourself. The sticker sheets all come in the um, the playtest kit. You of course get your turn slash VP counters. Now the game is to five VPs and each turn is worth a certain number of VPs. Um, these tokens go in the middle of your uh, turn tracker to see who's doing the best. And at the end of every turn, whoever side of the turn tracker this is on scores those VPs and it goes to you. So you get one through five. The game's either five turns or to five VPs depending on who gets there first. And you get your damage cubes, just little wound markers. You might recognize these from Dark Souls. Um, no idea, obviously these are all playtest components, so they could very easily change in the final version, but they're perfect for playing the game with to start off with. And then objective squares, you get one three hex square, which is typically the one you start with on the table. And then you get another, oh geez, uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 um, other ones. I just airbrushed them again. They're all MDF. You can see I've just primed them black and then airbrushed them to make them a little more pretty because I like to do things with everything painted. Uh, and then of course the cards and the rules do not come in the box. They're all print and play because they don't want to send out anything that's then obsolete later on. Um, obviously we're on point three from point one now and this has been out for about two weeks at the time of filming. So the, um, the stuff changes relatively rapidly. So you can play with it just off your tablet if you want. There's no like wipe, like you don't need to sleeve them to play. You can just print them off on a single sheet or even just play off your iPad if you want to. Um, to save like just print them over and over again. I just for the sake of the, the let's play print the most recent ones so you guys could see them. And we do anatomy of a card. And then finally you get your poster sheet here, which is the map. I imagine if, you know, final version this would be either cardboard or neoprene. And you can see here it is a 16 by 12 hex based grid. So no widgets, no measuring. Um, all your gubbins are off the map for the most part during gameplay uh, when you set up your, your basic terrain. So this is the, uh, the stuff that comes in the kit. Let's go through the anatomy of a card and how you win. So I do love how this rule book is laid out. Um, I skipped the component sheets because you guys don't need to see that. We just went over all that stuff. It starts with how do you win the game? It's scenario driven and you're trying to get to the best of five VPs or five turns. Now every turn you can move your turn counter back and forth. It starts in the middle and you do it by doing certain things. If you call, which is not going to follow her, um, so one of the little guys that follow the champions, if you kill one, it moves a space in the direction of your warband. If you conquer, so deliver a knockout blow to a champion, so knockout a champion, take their last hit point, it moves four spaces, so it'd go one, two, three, four. And it's constantly pushing and pulling back and forth as you guys are doing stuff. Claim, so place a banner as an action. You can place a, a banner on a friendly objective hex. Um, so you a friendly banner on an objective hex. When you place it down, you get one space. Capture, if it's there at the end of the turn, you get three more spaces. So basically, you can get four from doing banners or you can get four from killing a champion. Both are viable options to try and win the game. Uh, and then finally, crush, which is someone places one. Now, now followers can't move into objective squares. The aura of the god tier that is being created, which is the objective space, would just kill them. So most followers, there's some exceptions, can't move in. If a champion moves on top of a space that has an objective or a flag on it, he crushes the flag and he gets two for doing that. So the, you can deny flags, and that's a way of, uh, of earning points as well. So at the end of each turn, whoever has the um, turn marker on their side of their um, the, the turn track, basically, by pushing and pulling, scores the VP. Uh, and what they've done is they've tiered VP scores. So on the first turn, it's worth one. The second turn, it's worth two. The third turn, it's worth three. So the third, the middle of the game is the most valuable high point of the game. And it scales back down to, and it's first one to get to five or five turns wins the game. 
You shouldn't be able to get to five turns without one side winning though. Setup is relatively simple. Both sides roll off to determine first player and second player for the first turn. So whoever gets the six is first player. They get to choose their, ha their side of the battlefield to set up on, and they go ahead and place all of their champions and follower units um, along the deployment edge. Now every scenario will show you a deployment size. So for instance, in growth, which is the scenario we're playing, all along the edge is your deployment track. Now, there's only one scenario available for playtest right now. Obviously, more are gonna come out in the future, um, which could change deployment. You could end up with a hammer anvil style going across. You could even end up with like sideways ones. The sky's the limit for deployment. It's basically just whatever the colored in hexes are. So once you've placed a champion and their followers, your opponent would place one, you'd go back and forth until everyone's deployed, and deployment is then done. The first player remains set for the first turn of the game, and that means that that person will activate first during the strategic phase and first during the tactics phase. So let's go through the actual models now and do the anatomy of a card, as we often do. We're gonna use Rodri as an example. So now Rodri is a... Guardian. Every champion is one of four different classes, and each of those classes gives you certain perks. So a Guardian champion, when an opponent moves your Guardian champion, reduce distance by one hence, it's hard to push them. He's resistant to pushes. His followers, um, if they're adjacent to their champion, they can suffer damage in place of the champion. So basically his little dwarves can soak up damage for him as long as they're nearby. Makes him really good at holding territory. He can plant a flag behind himself, and it's very hard for it to be removed. Um, and, and he's good at sort of like just holding a position. A lot of his tech stuff is really in that way too. Slayer champions, such as Lorsane over here, um, when they make a, an ability, the target rolls minus one dodge, so it's way harder to get away from them because they're just good at killing stuff. And their followers, if they're adjacent to the champion, do the same thing, they get minus one dodge as well. So the champion and their followers are super killy as long as they stick together in a unit. Then you have Maelstrom Champions. Now the Maelstrom Champions are actually this fellow over here, Blackjaw. Um, they are one of the only ones that when they attack a unit with, or sorry, a square with more than one guy in it, affect everybody in the unit. So they're designed to kill groups of followers because you can have up to three followers in a single hex and their followers get better the more of them there are in a single hex. Most uh, attacks will only kill one of them at a time, but a Maelstrom guy can sweep whole units of them. So whenever he makes an attack, he attacks everything in the square. Super handy for getting clusters of dudes and killing them. Their followers um, can actually move into hexes containing one follower model. So um, normally you can't fight uh, uh, or you can't move into a unit that has another unit in it. They can move in and they cause a stun, which means they lose a dodge dice when they move in. They basically have like berserk charges where they move three units and stuff like that. So Maelstrom, very good at dealing with enemy infantry and other followers. Uh, and then finally, you've got the uh, shapers. Now shapers are your wizards typically. The shapers don't do um, additional damage based on hits. Normally when you use a skill against something, it's an attack. Whatever you beat, so you roll your number of hits. Like so for instance, if I used all three of these dice, I would get four hits. Your opponent rolls their dodges. You get one successful dodge there. It would cancel one of these hits. The excess amount would be damage. The shapers just have set things that happen when they hit. They never do damage based on the success level of their attack. They do whatever the effect is. So Wraith Mid Ridge over here, for instance, his, where is it, Bish. It does one yellow, one orange. If it hits a model, they suffer three damage and move them up to one hex. So they just take three damage no matter how many successes you have. It's just flat three, because he's a shaper. Same with his, um, Mr. Shale over here, he's also a shaper. He's got a couple of abilities that do damage, but they don't do the damage based on your success level. And those are the four classes. So when you're picking your champions for a game, you want to kind of take classes that complement each other and, and, and mix what you want to do. Taking all slayers might make you a bit weak against maelstrom guys. Taking all shapers, um, likewise, you might not have the damage output or the resilience to, uh, to last. So having a good mix of champions right from the get-go is based on your understanding of their classes. The first Rotary card also has his traits. These are things that you always get whenever he does the rally action. So if he gets knocked out and he comes back, he gains reinforce immediately. So when he stands up, he gets bonuses to his armor and he's already armor three. He reduces damage by three when he gets hit with melee stuff for physical damage. Um, he goes to armor four basically when he stands back up. And then behind me for the rest of the turn, Rotary is his ultimate. Rotary gains one armor and one resistance. And while adjacent to him, friendly models get one armor and resistance. So he becomes armor four, resistance five um, if he uses ultimate. Now the the ultimate is a skill you can only use once per game. It's kind of like a feat in War Machine. It's like your super powered up the power bar mega ability. And then each card has two sides, the tactics phase and the strategic phase. The turn starts the strategic phase. These are all the things he can do then. He has a movement of one, so he can move one square during the strategic phase. And then he's got two abilities. Everybody gets two actions typically. So he could move, 
up to one square during that phase. And then shields up, a uh, unit within three could become reinforced, uh, or at my side. Um, affects Rotor's unit immediately performs the recruit action. So the recruit action basically means that these guys, when they die, can bring guys back to life. So he's a bit, he's handy at basically keeping his guys alive and bringing more of them back. And then during the tactics phase, these are all of his attacks. He can move three more squares as an action, um, or he can do a shield bash, which is a melee hit. So you can see crossroads there, it's a physical damage. Um, it's got three yellow dice when you do it. Hit effect, they suffer weaken, and they move the target up to three hexes. It makes them a bit easier to injure. And then Sword Slash, um, which is just a basic attack that does a bunch of damage. So he's not got the highest damage output in the game, but he's pretty dangerous. Um, and he's very hard to move and very hard to get around. And that's it. Uh, then you've got your followers, and they have a slightly different profile card. Uh, again, they have what they do in the tactical and what they do is strategic. So their stat line for the strategic phase is up here, and along with how many guys are in the unit. Now, there is the possibility of having different followers attached to each champion later on. So for the playtest, Rotary only has his household guards, but you could very easily release new follower units and you just pick one to go with him at the start of every game. That's in the, the core rules. So even though these are the ones in the playtest, you could very well have like a cannon or crossbows or I don't know, guys riding giant rams or whatever whatever kind of thing you want to have um, that's thematically a follower unit and that'll give a second layer of choices to champion selection you're not just picking a champion in the future you're also picking the followers that come with them so like i said their whole stat lines on here so for his household guards you get four in the unit they can move one during the strategic phase they have one dodge die they resist two physical damage and two magic damage and they have one hit point each or they die um, Rodri's got, sorry, he's on here. I shouldn't actually go through that. Uh, one dodge dice, three armor, two resistance, and then six health boxes. So he's a lot harder to kill than the household guards obviously are. Then they also have never give up uh, as a trait. Uh, if there's only one of them in a unit, they get plus one armor and resistance. So they're armor three and resistance three if they're just a single guy. So it's actually okay to put them as single guys in units. You don't have to all put them on the same square. And then as a skill they can brace, they just get reinforced. So that means if they're alone and they spend one skill reinforcing, they can move one square every turn and be armor four. So super hard to damage. Um, and then during the tactical phase, they can move three. Uh, they have one dodge, two resistance, two, um, uh, two armor, and then one hit point. And then never give up. They get the same trade even when they're in the tactical phase. They can still brace and they have a sword slash attack. Now when you see a sword slash with three columns there, it's whether you have one, two, or three guys in the unit. So when there's only one guy, they roll an orange. When there's two, they roll an orange and a yellow. When there's three, they roll two orange dice when they make attacks. And that's the basic anatomy of a card. So um, your skills basically are, are what you do during a turn. There's also a bunch of generic skills. So for instance, you can advance. Advance is move your speed. You can, uh, if you're a follower unit, recruit. Uh, and recruit means that you place a new follower in uh, an adjacent square to your champion, a new guy shows up. And that means even if all your followers get killed, they can still make actions and come back and affect the battlefield. You basically never run out of followers. They can also kind of come back. The champion can rally. If he gets KO'd, he can... Um stand up again uh, and he reduces he, he shakes off a bunch of his damage but he's not he never goes back to healthy basically he's always going to be in a weakened state after that uh, and that's an ability that lets him come back to life uh, and then of course you've got place banner uh, which means that you can place a banner in contact um, with your champion and hopefully on objective square to try and score now, the last ability that only champions can do, of course, is invoking their ultimate. It does cost as one of your actions, basically, and means that you can um, can uh, do whatever the ultimate is written on your card. So for him, for instance, it means he gets the bonus resistance, and it also has resistance to his friends. Um, for Shale, it means that his golem basically gets healed all the way back to full as a recruit action. Uh, and then for our Mr. Wraith Marit over here, um, he goes to any empty hex within three, and then all models adjacent to remove two hexes. He just tsunamis and, like, a giant push of uh, explosion of water pushes people away. And then Lord Saint has perfect shot, add a yellow to all of her uh, skill rolls for the rest of the activation. So she, um, she just murders dudes. All right, so we're set up to play Growth. Now, Growth um, is the standard mission, as we said, uh, that comes in the playtest pack right now. And what you have is you have a central scoring zone, so three hexes of objectives. And every turn, the person who wasn't first player is going to get to place a red dice worth of more objectives. Because basically, the, the, the story for this one is there's a guard seed buried underground, um, and it's slowly expanding its range of power. And so the zone will grow 
in different shapes, but the new zone has to be touching whatever the old zone was touching. Now you can't place it on a hex with models in it. So if the thing is completely surrounded somehow, you start a new seed and it grows from there. And that one can grow as well during following turns. We have two on two we're gonna be playing. We're gonna do random champion selection. So and hold out your hand as we your two champions for the game. Whoops, one and two, Larsane and Rodri. Sweet. And that means I'll have Shale and Wraith Marid. It's off for first player. First turn, and it's gonna be me. Um, so I'll place a champion follower, we go back and forth. All right, and so we are deployed. I've got Wraith Marid with Whirlpool, 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 and then Shale and his Golem uh, all deployed. You've got Rodri with two house guards, two house guards flanking him. And then you've got Elf Ranger, Elf Ranger, Elf Ranger, and your Lorsane. Uh, so for the first turn, I'm first player, and we do strategic plays. So, so you want all of your cards flipped to the strategic side, which is marked with a little S. And the first player in the strategic phase activates his whole team, and then the second player activates their whole team. And the tactical phase, we're gonna go back and forth actually activating cards. So we'll start with uh, Mr. Shale. Um, he is going to do a move. Uh, his movement is two. So he gets two actions. He's gonna go one, two, and go up to here. Uh, and then he's gonna use a ability, and his ability is going to be Shifting Sands. Uh, it's got a three range. If Golem is within range, place in any empty hex within range. So he can get count one, two to his Golem, his total of three range, and then he can place it to any square within three. So he's gonna place it over here. That's Rodri uh, finished. His Golem has an ability. Uh, he has zero movement, so he has to be moved by Shale. Uh, he can Sediment, which is place the Golem in a uh, hex adjacent to Shale, and Mudslide, move target two hexes, target is a follower, move all models and target three hexes. So he can't really do anything first turn, because nothing's in range. So we're going to go on to Wraith Marid. Uh, his Whirlpool is going to activate, they have movement of three, so when you activate a follower unit, they all have to do the same actions in the same order. So first they're going to move, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. As their first action, uh, they can do Tide, which is a attack with a two inch range, uh, magic attack, they're not really gonna do that. And then like water once per phase, the Whirlpool's activation, you may choose a boon on Wraith Marid, the Whirlpool has gained that boon. So I should have gone with him first, but you can't because he actually teleports them for extra movement. Um, so next turn, I'll be able to pick a boon on him and have it apply. So he's going to then do his, he gets a single hex of movement, but he's going to um, jet instead as a skill. Oh, it only has a. Wait, never mind. Oh, within Slipstream. four. Okay, yeah. yeah. Slipstream. Choose one, a, one, a hex one, within range. That's right. And then remove the whirlpool and place him in the hex. So he can jet over to here, which he does, and it removes him. So it kills that one whirlpool. Uh, and then he will do his second skill, a move, and just move up to this. Strategic phase for all my models. It's over to you. You can pick a model or a, sorry, a unit and have them do something. Cool. Laura Sain's gonna go. She's gonna go one, two, three, four, and she's plant a flag. Advance and plant a flag, cool. Smaller unit or unit? Uh, next one, we're gonna gather the archers together. Okay. It looks like. Go one, two, three, four. So these two are gonna, the archers are gonna move. One, They'll two, advance, yeah. Three, yep. four, and then four. He's gonna join together into the unit. And he's gonna go one, two, three, four. And then they're going to evade, so they get an extra dodge. So they get a evade dice as a boon placed on their card. And now you've got Rodri and the house guard left. Who are all basically just going to move up and brace. Okay. Rodri will go one, and he's going to reinforce on uh, Lorsane. Lorsane, give her an armor. Yep. So you can have each boon once, but you can never have multiple instances of the same boon. So she's going to plus one to her armor value. She'll reduce physical damage by one. So we're going to go gonna one. And just reinforce. And then reinforce. Okay. So they each move one square during the strategic phase, and then reinforce gives them plus one armor. On the tactical phase, everything untaps, uh, and then we get to go and actually activate. Uh, we're going to have Wraith Morid go, and he flips to the tactical side. What pools are actually going to go? Uh, they're going to make an advance first, and they can move three. We're going to go one, two. We're going to go one, two. And then we're going to like, uh, sorry, do a current with a two range on Lorsane. Cool. Um, it's a magic attack. It's well. two yellows, and move target a hex away from this model. So I roll to see how many successes I do. And it's three. If I dodge it, it doesn't work. That's right. I don't. I don't. So one success gets three because you only dodge two of the points. Uh, these guys are shapers, which means they don't do damage based on level of success. They just do whatever it says in the card. In this case, it's going to be to push you back one hex. We're going to push you to here. 
Whirlpool. And be done. And whirlpools are now complete. So they've done two actions. There go. Yep. Advance. Take a step forward. Okay. And then she's gonna snipe. Uh, big guy. Okay, and that's Wraith Marid. He's got one dodge. Um, he gets plus one armor while each whirlpool is off the battlefield. So right now he's armor two. But he uh, still does not get a dodge because I'm a slayer. And you're a slayer, that's right. So his dodge goes down to zero because your slayer skill lets get lets you reduce dodge by one. So it's dice minus two damage, basically. Do it! Three. Three has five, so he has two left. And because Larsane did damage, she can move a square. Jail's gonna go. He's gonna move, advancing. One, two. And then he's going to use uh, the Earth, sorry, Shifting Sands. If Golem is within range, place an empty hex within range. So we're going to shift the Golem three over to here. Range is going to go? Yeah, first skill, they're going to move. They still move two. Yep. And they're basically just going to go one, two. And he's going to go one, two. And then, actually, sorry, they're going to stop here. And then they're going to snipe. Big guy. Okay, shooting into Wraith Marid. Yep, we got two on the zone. I get a yellow, two yellows and an orange. All right. Got all the yellows. Two yellows and an orange. And they ignore your dodge because they're base to base with, with her. Slayer. Yep. So it's this minus two. Take so one, one more. One damage, still alive. Going again. He, I do get a dodge against though because he's not base to base with the Slayer. But it doesn't matter. Doesn't do any damage, damage yet. yet. Wraith Marid's going to go. He is going to only be able to move one. So he will have to. Slipstream. Mm, or we could teleport. But I don't think that's going to be worthwhile. So actually what we're going to do is instead, we're just going to place a flag. And that'll be it. So sorry, the turn counter is here. You placed a flag for one. It goes back to zero because I placed a flag. Are you going to go? Now that both your champions have gone, he's just going to go one, two, three. We're going to plant another flag. That yeah, makes sense. Shift this back to our favor. Golem goes and doesn't do anything because he's oh, got nothing range, can't move. In that Four's case, go. We'll try for it. <laughs> okay. Now that we can't get hurt, oh, they all have to move. So these ones are going to go one, two, yeah, I messed that up, three. And the Golem, he's dodged two with two armor and two defense. Yellow, orange, because there's two of them. They do nothing. Uh, well, they can't, they have to do the same order, so they don't oh, have to attack. Uh, and so what happens now is we flip my flag for three, one, two, three, and then we flip your two flags for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The flags come off because they all get scored on your half. So in the first turn, you score one VP out of five. Turn two goes onto the marker, uh, and we start turn two. Everything untaps. Red dice for growth. Uh, and then you get to growth. That's right, because you went second. Two. So you get to place two new hexes anywhere in contact with the current one as it grows. Throwing the zone backwards towards your own side. Yeah. Now, followers, again, can't move into this, so the growth can actually be a great way of blocking things off. One's going to choose to go first, as he went second in the last phase. You do have a choice. You don't have to go first. Um, and that means you have first activation of everybody during the strategic phase. Dwarf's going to go. He is going to plant his flag, as you do. And then he is going to shields up on himself, I suppose. Now it's worth taking this step. He'll take one step here. Okay. And then the little dwarves are going to go. They're going to just never give up. Or sorry, they're all going to reinforce themselves. So they can all get that buff as well. So but basically both sides all have the plus two armor. Good stuff. And move. This one's going to stand here. He's going to stay where he is, and then these ones are both going to spread out like so. I was good to go. Uh, I, if I stand on my own flag, do I destroy it? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Then let's say Actually, I don't know if you can. Let's just see. I you can't stand on the same hex as the banner, so you can move. She's going to go one, two, three. Three over top. Cool. And then plant a banner behind her. So I'm actually, I've scored two, sorry. One, two. And then uh, that's it for her. And then little elves get to go. He's going to go one, two, three. And these ones are going to go one. Like that. And then he's going to try and sunder the big guy. Sweet. Little fairy. Fairy fire. Yeah. Do you successfully dodge it? Uh, my one dodge. I don't. So there I get are. Sundered. weakened. Sundered. My minus one armor. Yep. It's your strategic phase. So it's my strategic phase. I'm gonna have my whirlpools activate first. They're gonna go one, two, and then because they're shapers, one, two, three. Uh, who are followers can actually move through the 
the what should we call it? The the goo. Uh, then we're gonna have Wraith Marid go. He's gonna slipstream over to this one, mm -hmm. pulling it off and destroying it, and then he's gonna move onto this one and destroy it for two. I'll set the score back to zero. Shale's gonna go. He's going to go one and just stay there. He's gonna plant a banner for one. One's gonna go. He is going to mudslide on Rodri. Range on her, actually, sorry. It's Lorsain. range three, not two. Yeah, I'm more saying. Uh, and it's going to be one, sorry, three yellows. Let's see if I hit. Three. Uh, I get one more of these, actually. Yep. So I'm just Gotta go get on. a dodge. Yep. Does. Go no We're going to sediment then and actually just stand next to the boss. Your first activation now in the tactical phase, so all the cards flip to tactical sides. That's over to you. Zane's gonna go and try and snipe Wraith Marid. Yeah. Two reds and a yellow. No dodges allowed, and your armor is only two because I sundered it by one. Correct. You take five, four, and, and he's dog. knocked out. So you push, when you get knocked out as a champion, you push him three squares. One, two, three. Okay, and he becomes KO. Or score five for that. He's Normally it's insane. four. But That's right. Sure snipe so gets one, two, three, four, five. Second action, she's going to rapid fire onto uh, Mr. The Shaper, Shale. She's yellow, orange, orange on rapid fire. Getting five successes. Okay, and he's going to have two dodges because he's normally plus one dodge, but you're a slayer, so minus one. And you get five successes. Nothing. No, uh, and then he's armor two, which means you do three damage, you got one left. Now you can use it again, but you have to remove an orange die against Shale because you have rapid fire because it did damage. You do three, two, armor two, so no damage. Cool. You have to move yourself a square. Oh no, I didn't do damage on that one. Yeah, you yeah, didn't, I didn't do damage, damage yeah. on the first one. That's right. Never mind. We are going to activate the golem. He's going to bash your elf. Uh, he has a hit. He's a guardian when he's doing this. He's the guardian trait. Uh, and then he gets to do a attack with three dice. That's right, he's gonna impale her. So he gets two yellow dice for impale. Range one. Let's see what we got. Two. He's off with two. Dodge. Dodged it. Just. And then he's going to use a uh, bash on her. You lose your reinforce too, because it was against the next skill roll, so that goes away. And then we're gonna use bash on her. Uh, it's three yellow dice. If I succeed, I can push you away. Three. Yep. One. Yeah, okay, so let's push you two squares. And we will push you... Can't end on a flag, right? Can't end on a flag now. We're gonna go one, two, over here. Where's gonna go? He's gonna go... They're all just gonna move as their first one. They can move three. Yep. And these two are gonna meet up on the far side. And then second skill, they're going to attack. So these guys are individually gonna try and hurt him. And okay. These two are gonna go for him. So these two against the big guy. There's two dwarfs, so we get yellow orange. Four, Four? successes. Oof. That's a pretty good roll. And it's two dodges, which becomes one. He's armor two, which means you do a damage, but we're gonna put it onto the tree. Yep. Because he has the guardian trait, he'll take a damage. One little orange against the tree, or sorry, the first wolf. instance, we get three. Three? It's got dodge three. We only need one. Got it. Two. That's one. Yeah, Armor's it's got zero. no armor, so it just explodes. Point for killing a minion, and that puts you up to. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shale's gonna go. Uh, he is going to use. Oh, let's say the Earth obeys. No, he's gonna have actually do shifting sands to move his golem over to here as his first action. And his second action, he's gonna have the Earth Obeys. We're gonna bash on Rodri, try and move him. He's a guardian though, so he's only gonna move one square. So actually, that's probably not the best idea. We're just gonna have him impale Rodri. Two yells against dodge one. I don't think he can stop this. I didn't. Nope, okay, take four damage. Armor four. All right, four damage, remove all boons from the target. So I think, and that's hit effect, that's when it hits you, so it's before you apply the damage, so I think you take one. Three's up. Goodbye. Yeah, figured, so you take, get two, go to eight. Bash Shale. One of each. You get five, Shale has two dodges. Three gotcha. takes two, and he's dead. So you get push him three, and you get four more. Three. 
It's looking real good for this turn for you. Uh, so Wraith Marid gets to go. Uh, he's just going to, oh, I guess, actually, sorry. Uh, first thing we can do is actually we can recruit with the Whirlpools because they haven't activated yet. Mm -hmm. uh, that means I can place a Whirlpool in base to base. And it's gonna take a move action and go one, two. And then he's gonna rally, oh, which means- My he... elves haven't gone yet. Oh, then go ahead. Go ahead. So elves are up. They're gonna move first. They can move two. So I'm gonna go one to there and be within three. And he's gonna go one, two and be within three. Actually, no, he's gonna stand here. So dwarves can get through. They're gonna do a two shot into this little guy. Sounds good. And two elves is two yellow and an orange. An orange. Bam, and you only get two dodges because they're standing next to their yep. slayer boss. So it just dies. And you get one more. Point. Now Wraith Marid goes, he's gonna oh, rally. I guess he's gonna shoot that guy. Oh yeah, sure, right. I guess I, guess I, I still have my action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go one for yellow, it. one orange. I might as well try. Nope, doesn't nope, do anything. Doesn't do damage, just get too much armor. Yep. So now I rally, I shake two damage, so I go to three on me total, uh, and then I can make a move, or I could tsunami, tsunami. or I could just walk. I like tsunami. Place within three. Get back in there. Yeah, we're gonna tsunami. We're gonna use his ultimate. So place him within three hexes, and then all models adjacent or move two hexes. So we're gonna go like this. Uh, no, I can't quite get to this, unfortunately. Which is, wanted, which is what yeah. I want. Not that it's gonna really affect this turn. So we're just gonna tsunami to here, and then have adjacent models pushed two. Pushed two. So we're gonna go one. No, we're gonna go. One, two, and then we're gonna go one, two. Goes for Owen, goes I to get, three. I get three more. Yeah, two more. <laughs> I, uh, I have the thing. Yeah, yeah, you want well, this. Yeah, you'd score for your flag, but you're, it's not coming back to, to you. So you go to three VPs total to fall. We get some growth. Two. It's gonna be two. God tier continues to grow, and I get to choose to be first or second in the strategic phase. I'm actually gonna make you go first. I'm just gonna move and then reinforce themselves. And then elves are gonna go, and they're gonna go here, here, and here, and they're gonna fairy fire a bunch of times. Okay, fairy fire against the big guy. Do you dodge? One. Uh, he has two dodge. Sorry, one, one dodge. Two dodge. The big guy has two. Yeah. Oh, him. Uh, no, he, has... he has one. Just one. Yeah. yeah. So one. I thought you were talking about the goal. No, Still he good. Dodges again. Uh, one. Nope, so, so he gets sundered. sundered. Nice one, armor. And then against the big guy. Two. It goes. Gets to go. Roger's gonna go. He is going to just plant his flag and score us the first point. And then he is going to. Can't stand on my own flag. So he's just going to give himself nothing. I mean, there's not really all that much I want to do this turn. I guess I'll take a step. No, nope, he'll just sit there and give himself plus one armor. Sounds good. We Shell's gonna go. Or Veil, whatever name Lorsane. is. Lorsane. Lorsane has nothing that she can really do this round, except for aim true. Yeah, she's just going to move four. One, two, three. Do I stand there? You have me going first, so mm -hmm. you do. Four. And then plant a flag. You're scoring to two then. Uh, and it's over to me. Golem's gonna go. He's gonna mudslide this dwarf with three yellow. Uh, so actually, sorry, we're gonna, uh, yeah, we're gonna mudslide him. Uh, there's him. four, <laughs> so I can move him two hexes. He's gonna go one, two. He's just gonna stay where he is. Uh, then we're gonna have the um, little, whatchamacallits, the whirlpool. whirlpools go. Uh, and they're going to route, or sorry, recruit and place one. And then they're going to move one, two, three. Yep. We're going to have Shale go. He's going to rally and move two. He's going to go one, two. And he'll take two damage off. And then we'll have uh, Wraith Marid go. And he's just going to slipstream. And then he's going to crush this flag there we for go. two and go back to zero. First activation. Uh, Lord Sane's gonna go, because it's worth five if she kills you. And she is just going to snipe, uh... Wraith Marid? Wraith Marid. Sounds good. Red's in a yellow. Um, do I want to ultimate? Your armor four right now. Your armor three right, three right now, because I did yeah. sunder it. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, armor. Yeah, armor three. No, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna hope for the best. Okay. So uh, you take two damage. You don't get a dodge because I'm a slayer. Oh, that's right. Yep. So, so no dodge. Take two. And take two, and they'll kill me. So you place me within three. One, two, three. Or five. Because it was snipe, not yep. a normal kill. And then just rapid right. fire into the. I did damage, so I can move a step. You can, yep. But I'm only range two, so I'm not gonna move. Okay. And. Five, six, and then you get one dodge at minus two. So, so one. Three damage. And then he is armor two. So three damage total. That'll knock him out. Take a step. Because you did be damage. Fair. Is it when you do damage with that one? Rapid it's fire just is the... when she does damage. Okay. When she, she does a skill and inflicts one or more wounds, she can move Got a hex. Cool. She'll stand here. Sounds good. All right, then. Well, the golem's going to recruit and place himself in base to base. Actually, sorry. He's not going to do that yet. We're going to have Shale go. Okay. He's going to move one, two. He's going to ultimate. So you score two. Yep. I'll crush that for two. Actually, he's not going to ultimate. He's just going to place a flag. We're going to one placing a flag. Cool. Uh, Rotary's going to go. And he is just going to sword slash your guy. Sounds good. Yellow, orange, red. For seven. Two yeah. dodges. One, so it goes to six. Armor is two. I four. take four. It'll knock me out. I score four more. Okay. Me three over there. And then second skill. I'm going to walk up and just crush your flag. Back over to me. Uh, we can go with Wraith Marid. He's just going to activate and... Actually, sorry, we'll go with the Whirlpools. Uh, they'll rally. Sorry, they'll recruit and move. One, two, over there. Where's you gonna go? They're gonna move. One, one, two, one. And they're gonna shoot this whirlpool. Makes sense. Now that they're next to the Slayer, you only get two dice to dodge. Yep. And their snipe is yellow, yellow, orange. And they do four successes, which is all we need. Just kills me? Yep. Kills them. They're done. The other one can't fire because somebody's dead. Well, no, you can shoot him, it just doesn't do any damage. Right. What's the point? <laughs> Alright, we're going to rally and stand next to the boss, and then we'll stab that archer. Yep. You're evade for plus one dice. Uh, the stab is two yellows. Two yellow dice. Two. Dodge. Gets out of the way. Good to go. They're going to go one, two, three. One, two. And then one, two. One, two, three, and these guys are going to swing at him. Sounds good. They get uh, yellow, orange, and they do, oh, could, could potentially do one if you don't dodge it. Uh, and he is two dodges. Do nope. Hit. And two, yes, it is a point. As I'm activated out, that's going to be game. Uh, mean, so Wraith Marid can stand up, but all he can really do is stand uh, and do a skill. His skills, he's not going to be able to do anything that's going to get me back in the fight. So uh, we'll call it because you're way over there. You get three more, takes you to six, and that's game for Rodri and Lorsane. So there was a first look at God Tier. Now remember, this is a super early version of the game, of course, focusing just on the core mechanics. So uh, we had two shapers fighting a, basically two, two support wizards fighting a guardian and a slayer. Um, I think the game went as it was going to go. The full game would be three against three. Um, and you would have seen two of the big heavy follower damage output guys, such as Rangosh um, and Blackjaw uh, in, the, in the game for like a full game afterwards, which of course we'll film when you see the next episode. It's gonna get those guys painted. Uh, so yeah, super excited about it. It does very much feel like a, a MOBA style game. Of course, this initial mission is all about a center scrum, um, but I think the game's gonna change drastically when more missions get released, uh, especially if you're fighting for multiple points of the battlefield because it's not just gonna be everybody fighting everybody in the middle. It'll be multiple little engagements on different sides. And also when new followers come out, I think that's a very cool mechanic that you get to pick your followers as well because um, that's gonna mean that you have um, different options of how even each of the champions plays. So look forward to seeing more of it from Steamforge Games uh, and seeing what they do with it in the future. Uh, if you want to check it out for yourself, of course, you can just click the link below and go see the uh, the rules, the playtest documents, and talk about it on the uh, Facebook page because there's a Facebook God Tears Champions group uh, where people are just giving feedback, talking about the champions, talking about their games. So anyway, if you want to take part in the playtest, all the info is below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for another Let's Play in the future. Turn to MASH. Have a great game.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Desperate Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.